Only one episode to get through this week, but boy oh boy, was that an episode. Got a lot to get through, so let's go ahead and get started with Wheel of Time Season 2, Episode 4, Daughter of the Night. We open on Insurance Man in a dark passage between rocks, and he comes upon a space station? Well, yeah, anyway, he starts using his mojo on it until the space station explodes, and out comes something. Blood feeds blood. Blood. I don't really know. It was, it was a lot of growling. Cut to a get ready with me video with that fancy lady that Hollister met at the wine heist party. There's someone here to see you. A bit early now. It's your... Then he pauses very dramatically. Older sister. I sense tension. But like, did we need to say older so aggressively? Jeez. Oh, it's not Galadriel. Because remember, somebody at some point said that the girl bosses live like a hell a long time. So this is a subtle reminder of that fact. You look well, little sister. Are, are you catching it? Even though not Galadriel looks younger, she's actually older. Are you are you following? As do you. Please sit. Uh, nah, no tea for me. And she immediately starts telling the servants what to do and what to get for her and starts taking charge. It's been decades. For Simp's sake, I'm kind of glad to see that he's not the only one that she treats like garbage. Have some tea. Uh, maybe later. Gotta go more important people to see than you. Bye. Cut to Hollister dealing with the remains of the fire that he started. He's like, I'm sorry. And then not Yennefer is like, it's not your fault. <laughs> if only she knew. I'm actually glad it burned down. I can collect on the insurance and visit my folks while it gets rebuilt. You wanna come? Uh, no, I, I need to be alone. The fire drove off all the other tenants. Can't imagine why. You'll have the place to yourself. Cut to headquarters. Mean Girl is angrily putting on her graduation ring. We get to see that she's leveled up to the Rainbow Brigade. Check out those sleeves. Cliff brought her some treats from the cafeteria. Cliff notices Mean Girl's graduation ring. How does it feel? Mean Girl flinches and immediately withdraws. Then we cut back to Cliff, but the editors decided that they could just reuse the previous clip of her looking at the ring. Either that or she's getting real golem about that ring and can't take her eyes off of it. Anyway, uh, Cliff hugs her and Mean Girl kind of sort of manages to hug her back. Then we cut to Simp with his hair down, but not in dreamland. Simp has joined the fruit lady and her simps. Okay, so here I admit I was a little bit confused because I thought that not Galadriel had ridden off with fruit lady and her simps and had left Simp behind. So I went back to the previous episode, episode three, to like try to rewatch that scene to be like, hey, hang on a second. I thought, anyway, so I go back to episode three and I'm, I'm like scrolling through episode three, looking and looking and looking. And it's only then that I realized that Simp and not Galadriel, they weren't even in episode three, like at all. And I hadn't even noticed. Can't say I missed him. Anyway, back to Simp hanging out with the free love party. We cut to Simp pissing on a tree? Was that necessary? Fruit Lady, who's a real perv, comes and watches him. Simp tells her that her simps keep bothering him because they're really worried that he's gonna unalive himself. Fruit Lady's like, nah, your bond wasn't ripped from you. She took it. Yeah, I can totally see why that wouldn't be painful at all. Anyway, we're headed back to headquarters. You coming? I don't know. Well, Mean Girl's doing entrance exams. Probably she'll be needing a simp of her own pretty soon. I wasn't good enough for not Galadriel. How can I be good enough for anyone? I wish you could have known not Galadriel before. Um, before what? Haven't they been together for like 20 years or something? Before what? Okay, thank you. <laughs> I thought we were just gonna leave that ominously dangling. Whew. Oh, about 20 years ago. Almost exactly the amount of time that he's been with her. Something happened to her. One day, she was simply changed. Um, okay, when you said something happened to her, you mean she just kind of started slowly acting a little bit different? Like, that's not something happening. Like, 
Was she happier before? I don't know if she's ever been happy. Well, that checks out. Speaking of, we cut to Not Galadriel, playing with a dollhouse. Yeah, I can see why you didn't have time to talk to your sister. This looks super important. Then she looks up and we see the most terrifying portrait that has ever portraited. I, I can't really pinpoint why. It's, it's like an uncanny valley thing. I just, I don't like it. Then she sneaks out and visits Bedlam to check up on Hollister. She also wants to see 2.0. 2.0 is very amused. You're the reason I'm here instead of headquarters. How did you work that out? The other girl bosses wanted to study you. I doubt you would have enjoyed it. I doubt my enjoyment matters to you. Have you started training him yet? You sent him here too. Where's he staying? Why would someone that is incarcerated in an insane asylum know where somebody lives outside of it? You took everything from me. You really think I'm gonna help you? I know what you want. What you really want. What anyone who's cut off from their mojo wants. To unalive themselves? You help me, I'll help you. So your offer is that if he helps you, then he gets to die. Lady, if he wanted to unalive himself, from what I've seen, he's surrounded by plenty of options. He's not exactly in a straitjacket. Anyway, 2.0 tells her where Hollister is staying. I don't know when that would have come up or why Hollister would have told him, but okay. And that Hollister is super powerful and also scared of his power. So lots of things that we didn't know already. You will train him, teach him all you know about Mojo. And if I'm satisfied, I'll let you have this nut. Then she puts that big dagger into a huge, super loose, billowy pocket. Yeah, that seems safe. She glares as she walks out. Then we cut to Cliff and Princess doing chores. Cliff feels like Mean Girl's being more cold than usual ever since she went through the bog arches. Which, you know, that's saying something. Well, I mean, she did level up. Anyway, why is it your problem? <laughs> because I lost someone and she helped me, so I have to help her. But like, being in this like big pond is making me feel more and more like a small fish. Then we cut to Mean Girl walking around, headed for training with the simps. But she's looking for fruit ladies simps. Their way, but I can train with you if you want. Ew, gross, no. Did you really use Mojo in the bog arch? I'm surprised the girl bosses aren't following you around. But I guess you have years to choose. Just hope it's not red. <laughs> uh, mean girl glares, unamused. Bruh, you have no shot. No shot. Uh, red was watching this and she loves the way mean girl shut that down. Then red gets a letter and seems perturbed. She barges into the room of one of the other girl bosses. One of the ones that was there um, at, the, at the exams, at the bog arches. She's gonna need a name now too, huh? Wiki says that her name is Leanne? Well, that's kind of like my name, but I can't call her me. That would be confusing. What about library? Okay, so Red Barge is into library's room. Hey, the Western Shore is like under attack. Why aren't we doing anything? Ugh, it's always under attack. Such a drama queen. But we sent some girl bosses to check it out. And have you heard from them? Mm, no comment. And head girl boss, does she know? Obviously. Yeah? When did you last see her? Well, you see, when head girl boss is away, the assistant regional manager becomes head girl boss, and that's me. So I guess you could say I see her every day. Okay, well, if the real head girl boss goes down, guess who goes down with her? That's right, her assistant regional manager. Cut to doggos! The pups are running. Meanwhile, wifeless and vamp are barely keeping up as they limp along. Do the dogs just like run up ahead and then wait and then run up ahead and then wait? Cause there's no way these guys are keeping up. Are you sure we're going the right way? Wolves don't get lost. Okay, but it's not them that's leading us, it's you. I am them, so are you. Oh snap, it looks like Vamp is actually a wolf. That's my bad. What are we? And then Lupin responds, wolf brothers, and then walks away. Um, what's that? It's self-explanatory is what it is. So, am I gonna turn into a wolf? Ugh, no, idiot. That's ridiculous. Bruh, you're the one that refused to explain. Now he's gonna ask you stupid questions. You brought this upon yourself. Then they hear a howl, 
and then they see a deer hallucination floating through the air? One of our scouts spotted a buck, sent that vision to lead us. Okay, I'm not a wolf brother, but like how is a deer floating through the air supposed to lead you to anything? How is that supposed to work? Okay, thank you, my question exactly. I gotta say, Wifeless is a man of few words and not super quick on the uptake, but damn if he doesn't consistently ask the right questions. Instinct. Oh, of course. Instinct. Great way to not explain anything. So, did you get a message like this before the attack? Did you know it was coming? You could have warned us? You could have helped? Are you in chains? Wifeless is speechless. Time to eat. I gotta say, Lupin is really giving Mean Girl and Nocaladriel some stiff competition for title of most rude character. Wifeless watches Lupin and the pups devouring some raw meat. Super gross. While he cooks a bit of it for himself. He likes you. What's his name? He'll show you when he's ready. Anyway, we've had our eye on you for a while. You're lucky we were there to save you from the KKK in season one. But how did you know? We've been getting messages from you for a while. The dog makes a sad sound. He lost his mate too and mourns her still. Betty didn't kill her himself though. <laughs> Wifeless seems confused. We all see her when you sleep. Yikes, that's super awkward. Okay, so why didn't you approach me sooner? We don't mess with Mojo users. Why? Because girl bosses are bigots. Actually, everyone's a bigot. That does check out. Then Wifeless starts hallucinating a wolf jumping around. I guess that was a wolf sending him a message? Hopper, that's his name. Okay, when Lupin said that he would show him his name when he was ready, I really didn't think it was gonna be that literal. Cut to Simp in the Free Love Commune, reading that thing that he stole from Nakaladriel. Fruit Lady Simp comes to get him because they need help with getting water. I'm doing really well. I've had practice. Nakaladriel left geolocation off for months before the bond was actually broken. Wait, didn't she say that she couldn't turn it back on? Because, like, she didn't have her mojo? I feel like Simp's being a little unfair. I thought I was the only one that could go that long. What? So when I first got with Fruit Lady, I didn't really like having people in my mind. So we decided we'd turn it off the bond thing for like most of the time and then like turn it back on for battle and bedtime, if you know what I mean. Is that allowed? Have you ever known a marriage that is exactly the same as another? What? What, what does that have to do with anything? The others will say that you can't go back to Nakaladriel, but I'm proof that you can. What? Simp got dumped by not Galadriel. You made a deal with your girl boss to just like have a bit more of a chill thing going on. How was that in any way the same thing? Am I missing something? Cut to not Galadriel at the burn site. Goes to the guards to ask about the fire. They don't give a fuck. There was a guy staying there. Red hair. Wait, how do you know he was staying in that exact house? Like you didn't get an exact postal address from 2.0. What about him? Where is he? I don't know. Cut to where he is with not Yennefer. This is incredible. Are you for real? We have seen you seeing better views than that. Anyway, not Yennefer tells us some more about the dude that came before Hollister and how, you know, they used to go up this hill or whatever. I don't know. I wasn't really listening. He sounds a bit boring. <laughs> People in glass houses, my dude. Hollister then starts reminiscing about his hometown. The wheel never gives anyone what they want, least of all me. Okay, pity party, calm down. Nothing gives you what you want. If you want something, you have to take it. Cut to Gambler finally gambling again. Psychic barkeep is winning, so she's gonna get them drinks and a room. Sorry, rooms, plural, cause you know, no, no. When she goes to ask about the rooms, she also asks about the attic because she's supposed to meet somebody there per Red. Who are you meeting? I actually don't know. Cut to Red finding Mean Girl at the Bog Arches. Was any of it real? Okay, they said she was powerful, not that she was bright. The pain. Well, she would say that. Who did you lose in Dreamland? My daughter. Um, only? I recall you losing everyone. I'm just supposed to forget? I was in there for years. I've kept my son a secret for 80 years. You know, that guy that Mean Girl offered to help and then Red was like, no, get out, never! I told myself I was keeping him here for his protection, but I could have kept him anywhere. I kept him here for me. Wait. I get keeping him near you and like choosing where he lives when he's a kid. Were you saying that even when he was a grown man, he just lived where you made him live? That's um, 
Okay. Dudes can't handle Mojo. It makes him crazy and they kill everyone. But you know, being a girly with Mojo that lives forever isn't great either. Instead of killing everyone, we just watch them all die. Oh boy, these kids are such downers. Yeah, I can see why they don't let you near the trainees. See, what you do is, you get super attached to something, and then, when it's gone, get super attached to something else. Do you have a new thing? You gotta promise you won't do anything rash if I tell you this. Mean Girl looks super stable, so I say go for it. The Western Shore is under attack. Oh boy, we are switching topics, okay. One of the reports said they saw Hagrid and Wifeless there. Okay, for real, in what way does that have anything to do with what they were just talking about? Also, in what way is this a good idea to tell Mean Girl about this? Anyway, then we cut to Simp with the Simps meditating. The chiller Simps fidgeting and can't handle it anymore, so he leaves. He's lasting longer. We're wearing him down. Soon he'll be old and wise like us. Old, yes. Still working on wise. Something she said. You keep saying it to yourself over and over. A thousand cuts for her one. People don't get that us quiet ones... We're quiet because we're talking to ourselves in our own heads. She said that all these years, she never thought of me as an equal. <laughs> uh, duh. <laughs> Their girl bosses were simps. They're not equals. We're just there to remind them that they're not gods. Didn't think Fruit Lady needed a reminder because she's humble? We want the same thing as her. And that is triumph of light over dark. Oh yeah, that's super niche interest. I can see why you'd bond over that. What about Nocaladriel? What does she want? Honestly, no idea. Cut to the chill simp, showing Fruit Lady what he found in Simp's bag. You know, the poem that Simp got when he went through Nocaladriel's bag. And if I'm ever around these folks, remind me not to leave my bag unattended. Anyway, poem seems like bad news. Fruit Lady looks pretty worried about it. Cut to Nocaladriel back home, upset to find her sister waited up for her. I've had a long day. I shouldn't have to do this just to talk to the sister I looked up to for years. Because remember, she's the younger sister, even though she looks older. Don't forget. If you want me to say sorry, I can't. Because girl bosses can't lie. Man, she's such a bitch. No, no, I don't blame you. I wanted to be a girl boss especially when uncle lost all of our money. Dad kept waiting for you to come home, but nope. I would have come back if- Spare me. Wait, so she can't say sorry because that would be a lie, but she can say that she would have come back even though that's clearly not true? I do not get these truth-telling rules. I took care of business without you, and now my son is gonna marry the queen, so we're good. You did good, sis, better than I would have. Aw, oh, thanks, but uh, I actually don't give a fuck what you think. Yeah, staying up late to make sure that you get to tell Nocaladriel how you didn't need her is definitely the behavior of somebody that doesn't care what you think. What I do care about is that you don't fuck up what I've got going on here. It's not your house, or your city, or your sister. Not anymore. Also, your spies. Not yours. They're mine. Everybody you talked to today? Yep, they're mine. You want to know where Hollister is? Guess you'll have to ask little old me. Cut to Cliff and Princess having some more moonshine. Life must be great for you, knowing what you're going to be. Life must be great for you. You get to choose. Okay, let's trade. Uh, no. Then Mean Girl just barges in. I've been looking everywhere for you. Give us a moment. Um, excuse me? This is my room? Did I stutter? Guess I'll go wash my glass then. What a power move. Like, you found Cliff. You could have easily said, Hey, can we go to my room? Can we go to your room? Like, I need to talk to you in private. But instead, you kick Princess out of her own room. Like, what a flex. Red told me some stuff about Wifeless and Hagrid. And even though she said not to act rashly, I'm gonna act rashly. Wait, what? I'm leaving. I'm gonna rescue them. I leveled up, so I get to come and go now, but you're still a trainee, so you can't come. So, bye. Um, like I care? I'm obviously coming with you. Mean Girl smiles condescendingly. You don't get it, do you? I'm trying to learn to fight because I decided to blame myself for Hollister's death. If I'd been ready, then even though he snuck out in the middle of the night and went without any of us knowing, then I could have fought beside him. I'll never fail any of you like that ever again. So first we have Simp getting blamed for coming to the rescue of Nocaladriel, who snuck out and left in the middle of the night, and he followed, and but like wasn't good enough. And then we have Cliff blaming herself because Hollister snuck out and went to go fight by himself, and like she wasn't there for him. Like, guys, guys, 
If someone sneaks out and leaves you behind, it is not your fault what happens to them. Anyway, the gals sneak out, and honestly, they are being much stealthier than Gambler and Barkeep, or even though that was a prison break. Princess followed them. Red is here too? It's a trap! You are a complication. Then Red blasts them with her mojo. What? Cut to Barkeep having a nightmare. Insurance dude is here too? Red promised to take away your visions. Did you really think a girl boss could do that? Nope, nope, nope. I'm out. Deal's off. I'm not helping you hurt people. You will. I won't let you hurt Gambler. You might. You came here to find out where you gotta take him next. You want me to take away your visions? Take him to- I don't know, he's really murmuring at this point. I do not know what he said, but I, I'm guessing he told her the place that he is. I honestly don't even know where they are right now, though, so like... Cut to Hollister camping with not Yennefer. There's a nice cabin a few feet away, but they're sleeping on the ground outside of it. As one does, Hollister hears worrisome noises. A Voldy sneaks up on him, but not Yennefer warns him. Hollister mojos the crap out of Voldy. Wait, so the fire at my inn. An accident. An accident? I haven't gone mad. You know that. You know me. Tries to reach for her, but she is not into it. Got it. 10-4. I'll head out then. Wish it could have been different, but it is what it is. See you around. Where are you going? They say when mojo men go crazy, they kill the ones they love. So I'll go as far away from you as I can. You're saying you love me? Poor Cliff. Maybe. Why didn't you tell me you can use mojo? Oh, probably because you thought you'd react exactly the way you just reacted? You're the first woman who has ever seen me as a man. Poor Cliff. Didn't want you to see me as a monster. You're not. Mojo is part of you. You shouldn't have to hide it. And we're back to her talking about the guy that came before Hollister. And now they're going into the cabin. So we were just camping outside so that we would be ripe for attack from Voldy, I guess. Cut to Fruit Lady and her simps. What is it? A prophecy. It's about the bad lady returning. Bad blood lady from the beginning of the episode? It's... Oh, she's really not Yennefer. Uh-oh. Hollister's in trouble. Oh. Not Galadriel to the rescue. You killed her? You killed her! Nah, she's fine. She's the bad lady. Super dangerous. No, she is not! She's been lying to you. We girl bosses literally can't lie. Oh, dang. Good point. Time to run! We zoom in on bad lady. Alive. Okay, but like, bad lady was presumably searching for the real 2.0 that Hollister is. And presumably she started seducing him because she figured that he was him. So like, why did she need him to use his mojo in front of her before she like made her move? Does she like only have one shot at this? And then if she gets it wrong, it's back to the space station? But Hollister sure is lucky that Nakaladra was tipped off and caught up with him just in the nick of time to save his ass. Boy is blessed. Can't wait to see what other exciting coincidences are in store for us in the next episode.